This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. About a 1% sugar concentration. So it takes you 86 gallons of that sap to make that same one gallon of finished maple syrup. So mm -hmm. definitely a lot of labor savings involved if you take the time to try and identify the sugar maples that you have. And you see that just as you saw up in the lane, most of my sugar maples have white stripes on them. And this is this is what you're looking for here. This is a sugar maple leaf. You're looking for a leaf that has three to five of these little fingers. There's a little finger there, there, and then it has these three big ones here. Mm -hmm. And then they have these little scallops on the edges of their fingers. Most maple leaves have that general characteristic, three to five fingers, scallops on their edges. The thing that you're looking for that tells you that this is a sugar maple tree is that the scallops have very smooth edges. The next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wait until late winter of early spring uh, until you start to get those temperature fluctuations we were talking about. And there's always what I call a teaser week. So somewhere in January, maybe early February, you're gonna say, oh, it's it's gonna be warm for a couple of days. Well, wait, because <laughs> you always get one week where it's like warm for a couple of days, then you get another two or three weeks of really bitter cold. So mm -hmm. ignore the teaser week, but when you see eight to 10 days of that fluctuation in temperature below, above and below freezing, then it's time for you to tap. and when you tap a tree, you're basically going to take a drill bit, and we use a standard, we use a stainless steel drill bit because it's a little safer, but you can use any standard size drill bit, uh, and you're going to place a spile in your tree. And I have a bunch of different kinds of spiles. They all serve the same purpose, which is to get the sap out of the tree. But these are just different styles that have uh, been in use throughout, well, forever. In fact, some of my spiles are uh, 40, 50 years old because, I, again, I get them secondhand. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at the, the bags first of all. These are bags. Um, why buckets versus bags? I actually used to do buckets. In fact, uh, I had 150 buckets uh, at one point in time when I started out, and then I eventually moved over to bags. I like the bags a lot because if you look at a bucket, I know the bucket over here looks a lot bigger, mm -hmm. but this bag actually holds more sap. Wow. So this is a two gallon bucket, which is big uh -huh. uh, for a sap bucket. This is a three gallon bag. Okay, so when this bag is full, it'll actually hold three gallons of sap. This bucket will overflow at two gallons. So mm -hmm. one is this holds more sap. The other thing I like about this is as I'm driving through the woods here on my tractor, I can't tell how much sap is in this bucket. So I pretty uh -huh. much have to stop and look in every bucket, and that takes a long time. With this, as it fills up, the ball, you know, you can yeah. kind of look through the woods. You see that mm -hmm. the bags are bulging a little bit. You can actually see how much sap is in each one, and that's kind of cool too. And then the, the metal part, the sap sack holder, fit very nicely in my dishwasher. So I can get uh, 28 of these in my dishwasher at a time. And a couple hours later, I come back and I'm good to go for the next season. So mm -hmm. I like the bags a lot better. It's kind of nice, you know, with the fog sort of rising. Yeah. Very nice to go. So I'm going to take a different route than I've ever taken. I'm going to go the way that we go when we're gathering. Okay. Um, just because it's nice not have to have a feeling in the water. I'll probably turn around right here. We'll go. We'll go the straight route. That way, you guys can see more of the trees. <laughs> I'm gonna drive though, if that's all right. You wanna ride? This was 
actually from a dairy farm that used it to, to uh, transport milk. Uh, then they were steam cleaned and then I purchased them. So they've only been filled with milk once, then they were steam cleaned and now we're using them for maple sap. 275 gallons in each one of these. And then once we're ready to start processing our sap, uh, we'll turn on the reverse osmosis machine, which again is new to the sugar shack this year. This is the first year we've had it. Um, the reverse osmosis machine is just like what you would use in your house if you had a water system. It removes the water, uh, it separates the water from the other stuff that's dissolved in it. Uh, now in your house, you're keeping the water, the good water, and you're washing the stuff away. But we're doing exactly the opposite here. The water is being set aside and we're keeping the concentrated sap. And when we're ready to boil, we'll actually, excuse me for a second, we have a syrup being produced right now. Yes, we're running a lot. No, you're, you're good. Wait, that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually perfect. Yeah. And what's going on is as we boil the sap, all the steam that's generated is heating the copper, which is then being transferred to the sap that's inside the pipe. Usually we run right between 180 and 200 degrees for the preheat, uh -huh. and we've done nothing else to it. So we've got hot sap coming out from the flue pan. It goes into this front pan, which is called the finishing pan, and that's where you really start to develop the maple syrup. It comes in over here, and then it kind of is like a maze. It goes up, and then down, and then up through this partition until it gets to here. You can see, particularly up here, it's now thicker, it's getting foam, and you get big bubbles. You see up here in the front, there's real big bubbles. Then it's starting to get a little more like maple syrup. And as it winds its way over to here, and then over to this side, you can see that those bubbles are getting smaller and thicker. So we actually have syrup at about 218. This is a temperature gauge, it's a thermometer. We always want to shut that off before we open the door, otherwise you get this blast furnace type effect, and then we have a little more syrup. Yeah, brother. We always put on our fire gloves, because the door is about 300 degrees in there. See, we got a nice roaring fire. We just throw in a couple pieces of wood, shut the door. Now there's two ways to know that when you're done making maple syrup for the day. Either you're just so tired you can't do it anymore, <laughs> or you run out of sap. And uh, we're boiling, uh, we're boiling, not processing, but we're boiling about 32 gallons of sap an hour. So I have uh, approximately 100 gallons of sap in there right now. You can see this little 100 mark right there. So I've got about three, maybe four hours worth of sap to boil yet today. So that'll take me right through today's tours, which is awesome. So I got just enough. Um, our processing of sap, which is turning raw sap into maple syrup, with the reverse osmosis machine, we can process about 62 gallons of sap per hour. So we're actually quite efficient for the size of the operation that we have. Throughout the course of a normal day, I'll get six to eight gallons of finished maple syrup.